11 things poor artists do and rich artists don't. Poor artists are constantly looking at their phones and screens, consuming art in all forms. Even more so, consuming art was one of the reasons they became artists in the first place, because they dreamed of a job where they would be able to consume art and call it research. And because of that, feel good about scrolling slash researching all of the time. These artists will watch TV, Netflix, Twitch, YouTube, theater, plays, concerts, exhibitions, movies or listen to music and they will do that every single day. We are talking about the type of arts that is not able to ride the bike, do the dishes or work out without putting on some music first. And despite all of that, they still don't seem to see that they are addicted to consumption instead of creation. Number two, the poor artist likes trouble and invites trouble in his life because trouble is the most accepted form of procrastination in the world. If nothing is happening, to you and you don't do any work for a whole week people will call you lazy but if you just had a breakup and are barely doing anything for a whole month people will say it's absolutely normal you just need some more time and because of that poor artists suddenly create trouble in their life trouble that then can afterwards function as a valid excuse in the eyes of society Poor artists will get addicted to drugs and go in rehab instead of organizing an exhibition because it's a valid excuse. Poor artists will drop out of school and start being lost because it's a valid excuse. And poor artists will tell you that they love you and that they are excited to finally have your last name and then marry your family brother because drama is the best valid excuse. The problem is that trouble gives you a fake sense of importance and puts you at the center of attention among your friends and it's simply easier to get caught cheating on your boyfriend than it is to finish the play that you were working on. The rich artist, however, understands that all of these drama-related things prevent them from actually accomplishing something and therefore they don't allow any source of trouble to be present in their life. Number three, poor artists work their asses off seven days seven when they don't know what to do yet. They will, for example, waste their time on Instagram follow and follow strategies, not realizing that no matter how much time you put in a follow and follow strategy, you are not going to be selling art through that. And so when you don't know what to do yet, you should not be working seven days seven on your business. What you should be doing instead is putting time and money in learning instead of mindlessly working. Number four, Poor artists wait for inspiration and only after they found inspiration start doing the work. And because of that, they don't get anything done. What they don't understand is that by sitting down and doing the work, you set in motion a sequence of mysterious events that produce inspiration. And so it's not inspiration that produces work, but work that produces inspiration. And so in order to be inspired, you have to do the work when you are not inspired, when you are sad, when your friend betrayed you, when you have a hangover when you got a promotion, when you are falling in love. In short, doing every part of life, work, comes before inspiration. Poor artists go to openings, to network, to meet people and to fuck things up for themselves. What they will do, for example, is start sharing their own business cards during the opening of another artist without even asking people at the opening if they want the business card or not. Poor artists will start talking with the gallery owner and take up as much time as possible, completely ignoring the goals and intentions of the gallery owner, which is of course selling art and not talking with some random unknown artists. Poor artists will start posting advertisements of their own show on the Instagram post of a gallery they are not represented by. Poor artists go to openings on Friday nights right before they go out in order to consume as much free alcohol as possible and use the gallery opening as a pre-boost type of thing. Oftentimes, while complaining about the quality of the free alcohol they are getting, in short, these artists will network, but what they're really doing is marketing their bad behaviors to everyone in their local art community. Do that enough times in the same city and you are done. Number six, poor artists don't spend time learning new things after school or university. They never spend time reading business books, studying courses or interacting with coaches or consultants. Poor artists simply don't seem to understand that the biggest mistake you can make in the world is going to bed 
as stupid as you woke up. Number seven, poor artists try to be hardcore artists. Hardcore artists believe in art for art's sake and they believe that the only thing they should be doing is to make great art because great art speaks for itself. And so if they make great art, all of their dreams will come true automatically. And to give them some credit, this is indeed one of the best things you can do. Except for the fact that it's a dumb thing because it leads towards not selling anything, becoming depressed and killing your Fortune 500 brother. Rich artists, however, understand that being an artist means that you will be a salesman, a marketing expert, a social media expert, a website designer, an accountant, an organizer and anything else your business calls for. Because you need to be as much of a business guy as you are an artist. Number eight, poor artists compare themselves to the fancy they have of others while rich artists compare themselves to the numbers. Here's what will happen. Poor artists will go to an art show and will look at the art and think, wow, Wow, I can make something that's way better than this. And so why am I not represented by a gallery like this? And then they will proceed with thinking about all the money this artist is making and how amazing their lives must be, full of parties, girls and alcohol. And as a result, they will feel sad because it's already June and they didn't sell any art yet this year. Now, what these artists don't realize is that 55% of galleries in the world are making less than $200,000 in revenue a year. And from this, they have to pay rent, marketing materials, art fairs, and their artists. Meaning that in 55% of the cases, the artist is not seeing any money. Only when the gallery is making over 1 million a year, will the artist see any money. And only 16% of all galleries can count themselves in this category. And even then, not all artists shown by those galleries are making money because there's also, of course, the 80-20 rule that states that 20% of your artists will be responsible for 80% of the revenue. And so the truth is that the majority of art that is being offered in galleries actually never sells and after the show just goes right back to the studio of the artist. Meaning that in most scenarios, the jealousy the poor artists felt during the exhibition was completely unnecessary. Number nine, poor artists drench themselves in enthusiasm. And because of their unrealistic enthusiasm about a new project, they end up with unrealistic timetables and unrealistic expectations. And when they inevitably don't accomplish the tasks on time because their timetable was insane or when none of their expectations become reality, they get disappointed. And because they get disappointed every single time, the poor artist eventually gives up. The rich artist, however, understands that too much enthusiasm always results in disappointment and because of that, they don't wait for enthusiasm. They just start doing the work before they get a chance to get enthusiastic about the project. Number 10. Poor artists will call themselves an artist long before they make money from it because they over-identify themselves with being an artist. Which artists, however, understand that the problem with over-identifying yourself with being an artist is that everything you do is tied up in your identity, meaning that everything you do becomes way too important. If the artwork or the book or the song of the poor artist fails, it doesn't just fail, it destroys their entire identity and reveals who they really are, namely, just another regular human being instead of an upcoming genius artist. And the poor artist is terrified of that realization. They are terrified of being regular. And because they are terrified, they never finish that play, interact with the galleries or send out those emails. The poor artist thinks that the quickest way to not lose his identity as an artist is to never fail as an artist. And the quickest way to never fail as an artist is to simply never try in the first place. In other words, the poor artist takes his practice so seriously that it completely paralyzes him. Number 11, rich artists understand that pursuing art is signing a contract with the devil. They understand that pursuing art is a life of misery and despair, of solitude and rejection, of ridicule, self-doubt, comparisons, failure, financial constraints, not getting the girls and not even having time to think about the girls. And rich artists fully understand that that is what they will get in the first couple of years. And as a result, they are not defeated when those things happen. Poor artists, however, signed up for a life of parties, of getting the girls, of fame, of riches beyond their wildest dreams of millionaires and billionaires and fancy dinners. Poor artists signed up for a life where they can work for one hour on a painting and then sell it for 10k. 
And although we all have dreamed about this life at some point in our lives, pursuing this and only this inevitably leads towards regret, pain, suffering, postponing, the reality, and eventually giving up on your dreams altogether. These poor artists simply never learned how to be miserable and as a result, they give up. Number 12, you might be thinking by yourself that knowing the difference between the rich arts mentality and the poor arts mentality is cool and all, but it's also very fluffy and to some extent totally useless because it still doesn't make you rich. You are still not selling any of your art, you are still not building your audience, and you are still not actually growing your art career. And so we should of course be talking about how to sell your art and how to build your audience and how to actually grow your art career. But that would be another 15 minutes and frankly, completely different video and so I'm very sorry but we are not going to do that predominantly because I already did. It's called how to sell your art through content creation. It's linked up in the description and the end screens. That's it. Get the hell out of here.